Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, sorry it's been a couple of days without any content. I'm very um, cognizant of the fact that we don't want to just come on here and ramble and talk about rubbish. So, um, just been waiting for another story to pop up and today um, we have a couple. Firstly, I'll just quickly mention the death of Norman Hunter. I know we've got I've got a lot of Leeds friends and we've got a lot of Leeds subscribers so um, obviously we dedicate what we do today to Norman Hunter who's died today. Great player for Leeds in the 60s and 70s. I keep seeing the number rising and rising about 700 games or something so um, obviously we dedicate this um, little YouTube video to Norman Hunter. Um, and the other story is um, that we've had a hell of a lot of Rick Parry today. Rick Parry, the um, chairman of the EFL, formerly the chairman of the Premier League, credited with a lot of the success of the Premier League to begin with. Um, he was in charge of that in 92-93s, um, worked for Liverpool and um, he's with the EFL now. He has not only has he written an open letter to football supporters which was distributed sort of through the club's websites this morning um he also followed that up by making an appearance on the sky football show which is um kind of cobbled together every morning um with kelly case and Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher today. So um, what did he have to say for himself? Obviously, this is a day after we've gone into a further three weeks of lockdown. Um, the key points in Rick Perry's letter to the supporters were that um, when football resumes, it will likely be behind closed doors without crowds. I think um, as this pandemic's gone, most people have figured out that until we have a vaccine for this thing there's certain events that just ain't going to happen and football with crowds and pop concerts are obviously right at the top of that list. Um, all the matches are going to be made um, available to watch on iFollow or on other online streaming services. I'm sure we're going to get an interesting clamour here about um, how that is charged. Obviously, the clubs desperately need money. They absolutely need money at the moment. On the flip side, we're going to get people saying they paid for their tickets or their season tickets. And, you know, this should come for free. I'm sure we're going to get people arguing it should come for free. I'm sure we're going to get clubs wanting to, wanting to charge. I, I think where I come from is that we all want there to be hopefully 72 EFL clubs, 92 um, league clubs, obviously we've got 91 with, with Berry are going to come back in further down whenever next season is, but we want to see football continue with that many. So I would imagine um, they'll come up with some kind of package deal. Um, hey, it'll be a nice problem um, for them to get to uh, because it'll mean that the players are actually out and and playing again even if it's behind closed doors although I know both sides of it the clubs are going to want to charge and I know that there are going to be people that whatever the situation um, will just think about their own finances and wanting to get something for free I'm sure somewhere in between those two um, positions of give me it for free and we want to charge you as much as possible there'll be um, a nice grey area that's a good solution for everybody. Um, there is no indication of when it will be safe for fans to attain games. Again, it, it really just looks like um, as we come out of lockdown into a staggered lockdown and um, small places of work open and um, restaurants with social distancing and basically gradual sectors and things open it just seems fairly obvious like I said that um, 50,000 fans I suppose in the um, EFL you could have um, Sunderland up to that number but more likely the bigger crowds in the EFL are 25 30,000 aren't they not happening until we've got a, a vaccine is it so um, hey who knows could even do a whole of next season behind closed doors before they even might just draw a line under it and say no fans for the whole of the next season, let alone the end of this one. We will see. Again, money will talk on that. Um, and his final point in the letter was that delivering an end 
to the 2019-20 season is still a priority. Um, it's going to be interesting watching the language change on this because um, I figure the longer we go, it's going to be um, go from a necessity to a priority to, if at all possible, um, we'll talk about the interview that he did. There will come a point where um, they may have to draw a line under it. But really, for me, once it's gone past the point of it being very, very difficult, my brain says, "Well, why would you? Why would you rub it all out? Why would you rub it all out now? Even if we're going into restarting in autumn, or, or what have you? You know, you've lost that much time already. What, what are you gaining by um, this extra fifty-six days that we've heard about? So, um, anyway, more on that. So um, he then goes on the program with Kelly Cates and Neville and Carragher. A um, couple of interesting lines on this. He said the virus will decide." when we play a game. Um, obviously, you, as you can imagine, someone of Rick Parry's um, sort of stature and position is going to be pretty unflappable in an interview with, with anybody, really. Um, so he, he spoke very well, as you'd imagine. Um, the virus will decide when we play again. I think in terms of people's frustration, I think that's probably quite a good line that um, this is not people in suits or owners or players deciding this. It is the virus that decides. Um, he kind of pushed home the point that owners and sponsors have no money coming in, which is a very big problem for the EFL without the big TV deals. That um, you know that that kind of track of money and the flow of money is literally the river is stopping dried up from source. So. Um, whoever's down at the bottom of it as a lower ranking EFL2 club stands no chance of picking anything up. Um, he's very honest. He said, to be blunt, nobody has any answers. And I think, I think that's important to say, and even in terms, I've started saying this on YouTube now, um, even in terms of our discussion and subscribers here and me chatting with you guys and us talking, um, I'll reiterate what Rick Perry says, nobody has any answers and we just need to kind of chat respectfully and I'll keep using my term, well, that's a guess because um, even Rick Perry, Gary Neville, you know, big famous people of big stature, they're essentially guessing the same as you and anyone else, me, down in the comments there. Um, he said some clubs are on the edge. Um, clubs were on the edge, frankly, before this happened um, so this is obviously going to exacerbate that issue I don't think that's any news to anybody um, and it'll be interesting because it won't just be EFL2 clubs that are on the edge we know EFL2 clubs are on the edge and uh, League 1 and 2 clubs on the basis of the little money coming in and I think the championship clubs as well are on the edge with the amount going out from there as well so it, you know it might not just be a, a small club with small crowds. You know, there'll be plenty of big historical clubs on the edge as well in the championship. Um, he says bigger problems come at the end of June. More than 600 players coming out of contract. Again, it's, it's speculation. All depends when we come back. But you would hope some uh, universal solution would be made to say that um, contracts will be extended until... The natural end of this season but <laughs> is that legally enforceable one does it suit players well it might not suit some players if they want to get out of a contract and they're expected to stay in it does it suit clubs possibly they might want to get players out and off the wage bill will they then be expected to pay the extra months that it takes to finish it's a real minefield the the contracts thing um you would hope that they can do something similar to what I've suggested where it goes to the natural end of the season and with the deferrals and um, things of that nature holding back that money that they'll be able to um, load it the other end but it doesn't sound like an easy one to get out of with the contracts if not you're going to get an absolute free for all of um, free agents all at a very weird time interesting I heard the Portsmouth chief exec on the radio saying that um, he's lobbied Rick Parry, who was open to the suggestion possibly of the transfer window not closing at the start of the next season so clubs can 
move and um, move and twist and um, use assets, saleable assets, to get themselves out of positions. It would be his um, wording was it would be silly for a, a club to go bust um, because of a transfer window and essentially a restraint of trade. I'm trying to get my head around whether that would be a good thing. Generally, um, those type of things will benefit clubs with money and although it seems like they're helping clubs with little money, you know that market forces dictate that players will still be sold for sort of low amounts. Um, anyway, let me get down this. Um, he says, we can do testing in sterile stadiums, but if the virus hasn't gone away, then there's still a risk. And that's totally true. Even in a um, staggered lockdown where people are starting to go back to work, while the virus is there, there's still a risk. And he's saying, yes, you can sterilise the stadium. Yes, you can test people. Again, there's the issue of, do you test football players to entertain people ahead of um, Joe Public, who's possibly got the virus? That's not going to sit well until we've got really good testing capacity. And his point stands that, yes, you can sterilise a stadium, but someone can still bring the virus in. You're assuming everyone's going to be tested, but then a player can go away um, and still catch it and then bring it back. So, um, yes, sterile stadiums, but you, you would assume... Every person that goes in there would need to be tested every time. Wow, sounds like an absolute minefield even to put a game on, doesn't it? Um, he says it's frustrating, we don't have an answer, and I don't think we'll have another answer for another month, um, as in we're going to be waiting for Cobra and Sage and the government um, May the 11th, is it, the next end of the next lockdown, where will we see some staggering? I suspect we will. Um, again, that's me guessing, or will there be another week, two weeks, three weeks of... Full lockdown, who knows, all depends on the um, the numbers with the admissions to hospital and sadly the, the death toll um, plateauing and dropping. Um, he says, we want to finish the season on the pitch. Sporting integrity is of paramount importance, but anything is conceivable. Again, watch the language change as we go longer and longer. He said it would be foolish to rule anything out, i.e. if this lasts for another four months and clubs start to go under, then... The landscape changes from where it is today, where we, we have our clubs, we have nine games to play, and we're waiting for it to become safe, whereas the longer it goes, that um, more moving parts might change. Um, he said he can't imagine that anyone thinks when lockdown ends, we're going to come straight out of it. That's what I'm talking about, the, um, the staggering of things and at what point and what level um, this type of industry is involved and comes out in that staggering can they be kept safe um, he says uh, Gary Neville pressed him on about restructuring obviously it's a bit of an ironic question when you've got uh, the guy who's currently running the EFL where the biggest problem with the EFL is the disparity in money between the EFL and the Premier League and that same guy <laughs> was kind of uh, before Scudamore um, responsible for really helping to bring all of that money in there. So I'm sure he's quite conflicted with that question. He sort of batted it away. He did say there were meeting groups of players today. Um, how can um, we all be part of the solution? And he wouldn't be drawn on Gary Neville's question. Is it palatable that a club could go bust? And next week you see a Premier League club spending £100 million on assigning all very um, interesting stuff. Um, as with all of these things at the moment, we, we learn something, but we learn nothing at the same time because, um, as he's keen to point out, nobody knows. Um, obviously, he's a very smart guy and he talked very well, so um, he kind of has my confidence. I'm sure he doesn't really care whether he has my confidence or not, but um, he seems to be a good figurehead for this. And um, although sort of Birmingham Derby Sheffield Wednesday fans may not agree because of the FFP charges. He does seem to have been a bit more um, strong on issues than Sean Harvey was before. Um, that said, um, let me know what you think about how he's laid stuff out. The key points are um, behind closed doors as we go. Um, really wants that season to end. Um, but he was very clear that to be blunt, um, the virus will decide was his final point. So for all his power, Rick Parry in that position, the virus will decide. Let me know what you think in the comments. Again, let's try and be respectful of people's opinions because nobody is right and nobody is wrong. We are all guessing. So um, try not to speak in 
absolute terms. Um, it always helps to say, in my opinion, or I think this will be how it's going to play out, because that's the situation we're already in. Hopefully I've come across that way. Um, in terms of more content on here, I have done an episode again with Jack Reeve after the, from Talk Norwich City after the last one went down. So if that goes well, that might become a regular thing during lockdown. So we'll need ideas for topics. And I'll probably try and do a live stream at some point, although there's been some technical problems after I finished live streams recently with YouTube not accepting them for upload and then kind of disappearing into the ether for 10 to 12 hours afterwards which does not help with my view count which is sadly important on youtube i have to say um thank you everybody hope you're all safe i hope we've picked through um rick parry's words today fairly sensibly i need to give the ipad back very soon so i will bid you all farewell um get involved in the comments and check out it'll be later on today um episode one of uh, Reeve and Bloom on the East Anglian Derby. It should be fun. Okay, see you all soon.